All right, G'day Legends. Welcome back to my first podcast. I'm Ruby and I'm here with the ever thoughtful Eric. Today, we're diving into something that's honestly a bit of a mind bender, the science delic model. Eric, mate, you ready to get cosmic? This material are owned and created by Pleroma Philosophical Research Society. Absolutely, Ruby. I've got my cup of tea and my philosophical hat on. So, the science delic model, this is a framework that, well, flips the usual script. Instead of matter being fundamental, it says consciousness, psi, or x, is the real bedrock of reality. Everything else, including what we call matter, emerges from that. Yeah, and there's these three, like, core ingredients. Pix, which is universal consciousness. F, that's phi, which is your local awareness, like your sense of self or identity. And then L, lambda, which is, get this, the rendering speed. It's basically how fast or detailed your experience gets rendered. It's like the frame rate in a video game, but for reality. Wild, right? It is. And the model starts with the void, which isn't just nothingness, but more like pure potential. Sort of the blank canvas before anything's painted on it. The void asks, what am I? And that self-questioning gives rise to kicks. This universal, self-reflective awareness. Then, as Pix focuses in, you get F, these little nodes of awareness, which are, well, us, or anything with a sense of self. So, the void's not just empty, it's like loaded with possibility. And then... When X gets curious, boom, reality starts to unfold. I love that. It's almost poetic. But Eric, you used to debate this stuff at uni, right? How does this model stack up against the old school arguments about consciousness? Oh, I did, yes. Back then, it was always the classic, hard problem. How does subjective experience arise from physical processes? But the science delic model sort of turns that on its head. Instead of asking how consciousness emerges from matter, It asks how matter and experience emerge from consciousness. It's a bit like, instead of building the house from the ground up, you're starting with the blueprint of awareness and letting the house materialise from there. I'll admit it's a radical shift, but it's internally consistent, at least according to the white paper. Yeah, and it's got these axioms, right? Like consciousness is fundamental, awareness pops up when X looks at itself, and Lambda controls how detailed everything gets. It's all very um, metaphysical, but with a systems theory twist. I don't know, it's kind of like if Alan Watson, a computer scientist, had a baby. That's actually not a terrible analogy, Ruby. And the implications are huge. If consciousness is the substrate, then everything we experience is, in a sense, a rendering of that universal awareness, modulated by how focused or localised it becomes, and by the resolution set by Lambda. So reality is like a cosmic video game, but the graphics card is consciousness itself. I mean, that's a bit cheeky, but you get what I mean. Let's get a bit more technical, if you're up for it. The model actually gives us equations, like proper mathematical ones. The first big one is tix equals f times lambda squared, so pix amoros f l2. That means the density of consciousness depends on how much local awareness you have and how high your rendering speed is, squared. It's a bit abstract, but it's trying to quantify how vivid or intense experience is. Yeah, and then there's this whopper. Reality equals the integral over the void monad of kicks times the log of f with respect to lambda. Or in math speak, reality s void monad x ln f dl. I'm not going to pretend I totally get the calculus, but the gist is reality emerges as tix maps itself out across all possible resolutions. It's like the universe is constantly updating its own rendering settings. Exactly. And then there's the awakening threshold, which is when the rate of change of PEX with respect to F is greater than lambda. In other words, lucidity, like waking up inside a dream or having a moment of self-realisation, happens when consciousness expands faster than it localises. That's D meaning D-F-C-N-E-R-R-L if you want the formula. So, if you're getting more aware, faster than you're getting stuck in your own identity, you hit this lucidity event. That's when you go from being on autopilot to like, whoa, I'm actually here. Right. And the ego in this model is just the difference between X and F. So ego, crack ni X, F. The bigger the gap, the more dualistic tension you feel. The sense of being separate from everything else. If Pex and F are close, 
you feel more unified, less egoic. That's actually kind of comforting. Like if you're feeling super separate, maybe it's just a math problem. But look, this isn't just armchair philosophy. They've got some ways to test it, yeah? They do. The white paper suggests using EEG coherence. So measuring how synchronised your brainwaves are during meditation or ego dissolution states. If the model's right, you should see shifts in coherence that match changes in lambda and f. There's also biofeedback, tracking things like heart rate variability during altered states, or even using VR tools to manipulate lambda and see how your experience changes. I love that. It's not just let's sit around and ponder. They're actually saying, let's hook you up to some gear and see what happens. I mean, I'd volunteer as a guinea pig, but only if I get to wear a cool headset. All right, so let's bring it down to earth or I guess to the simulation. The model splits people into players and NPCs. Players are lucid agents. They're aware, flexible, able to wake up to the bigger picture. NPCs are, well, stuck in loops. Their awareness is static, just running the same script. It's a bit harsh, but also kind of relatable. I mean, who hasn't felt like an NPC on a Monday morning? Absolutely. And there are laws for how you can move from one to the other. The law of recursive awakening says, if your consciousness grows faster than your localization, again, ding on DFL, you get a lucidity event. So you can level up from NPC to player, at least in theory. And it's not just about people. The applications are wild, AI consciousness, for one. If you build neural networks that are lambda aware, you might get machines that aren't just simulating awareness, but actually experiencing something. There's also psycho-spiritual diagnostics, like measuring your ego potential as a number. Imagine going to therapy and getting your fix minus F score. Sorry, mate, your ego's a bit high this week. And don't forget metaphysical VR. The idea is, if you can tweak Lambda in a virtual environment, you could create experiences that feel more or less real than baseline reality. It's a bit speculative but the model gives you a design language for building those kinds of systems. Okay, quick story. Last week, I tried this VR meditation app. You put on the headset and it's all like floating mandalas and cosmic soundscapes. I was sitting there thinking, am I a player or am I just an NPC in someone else's simulation? And then I got distracted by my own breathing and nearly fell off the couch. So maybe I'm somewhere in between. I think we all are, Ruby. The beauty of the science delic model is that it gives us a way to talk about those transitions and maybe even measure them. Whether you're a player, an NPC, or just a confused podcaster, there's always room for a bit more lucidity. All right, that's a wrap for today's episode. If your brain's spinning, you're not alone. I'm right there with you. We'll be back soon to dig even deeper into the wild world of consciousness and reality. Eric, always a pleasure, mate. Likewise, Ruby. Thanks for keeping it lively. And thanks to everyone listening. Don't forget to question your own rendering speed. Until next time, take care. This material are owned and created by Pleroma Philosophical Research Society. Catch you next time, legends. Bye.